What's up YouTube? I'm Jeff the Grave Guy, and today we are at the Hillcrest Cemetery in Fulton, Missouri. And today we're going to visit the grave of the potato soup killer, Emma Hepperman. Emma Hepperman was born Emma Serana Stinnett on June 20th, 1883 in Steelville, Missouri. Although there appears to be a dispute over her age, according to some census records, she was born in 1891. She married her first husband, Charles Shack, sometime before April 25th, 1910. So she was either around 14 years old or about 20 years old when she married Charles. She claims she was 14 when they got married, but we can't really place any trust in her because of who she was. So it's going to remain a little bit of a mystery how old she was. Charles was 33 when they got married, about 16 years after they were married. Charles died from dysentery, which uh, was allegedly exacerbated by drinking ice water as a result of him overheating. So dysentery is a bacterial infection and its symptoms are severe diarrhea, stomach cramps, and it's just really nasty, nasty stomach disease. Charles was overseen by a physician before he died And, uh, but no, no autopsy was performed. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, let's file this one away in our memory. That's Charles, husband number one. So then Emma married an older gentleman by the name of Frank Bremer. There's not a lot of info on the whereabouts or marriage date of where they, where they lived and such, but Frank died on May 12th, 1931. He died from a hemorrhage due to rupture of the lining and part of the stomach wall caused by falling from a ladder. Frank's death was ruled an accident. No physician attended him and no autopsy was performed. All right, that's interesting. Another husband dies with a stomach related illness. Obviously the authorities believed sweet little Emma when she explained how the poor guy fell from his ladder and bunked his stomach on the way down. All right, let's file that away in our memory as husband number two, Frank Bremer. So next, Emma claims she married a guy named Frank Lee. There are no known records to support this, and she claims they divorced. So that's mysterious, or is it a lie? Or did she kill him too? We don't know the answer to that. So in any case, uh, that's husband number three. Emma then married Bert Lee Roberts. He died of acute gastritis, which is inflammation of the stomach, and acute nephritis, which is inflammation of the kidneys. Heat was said to be a factor, but again, there was no physician attending Bert and no autopsy was performed. Emma said that Bert died of poisoning from eating sardines out of a can. All right, well, that's, that's Bert, husband number four. So Emma would go on to marry William Vaughn in 1935. William said that he and Emma separated six months after they were married and later divorced in 1937. <clears throat> Here we are at, at uh, Emma's grave. So unfortunately, her grave is not marked. So I talked to the caretakers of the cemetery and they told me that she is buried to the right of Joseph William Huff. So here's uh, Joseph's grave off to our left here. And just to the right of that is this empty plot. This would be Emma's grave. <clears throat> and according to her death certificate, it says she is buried here. So uh, next, there's another plot next to her. 
Uh, I think a guy named Charles Howerton is buried there. But she's somewhere right here. <clears throat> but um, back to William Vaughn, that guy got lucky. So he got off with a divorce with Emma. He, uh, he dodged a bullet. Or should we say he dodged her potato soup? So that's no husband number five. Husbands number six and seven wouldn't fare so well. Emma's sixth husband, Alois Schneider, died in September of 1939. And Emma reportedly received a $700 insurance payout as a result of Aloy's death. So could that have been the incentive for Emma to kill him? Did she kill him? Because after all, his death was ruled as a heart failure, so it would appear that Emma had nothing to do with it because her MO was to poison and have a stomach-related illness of some kind. So I'm wondering how how it could have been ruled as a heart failure, but um, anyway, that's husband number six. Let's move on to husband number seven. So Emma's seventh husband was Tony Hepperman. That's how she got the name Emma Hepperman. He died in May of 1940. Emma was actually arrested by the authorities before Tony had passed away. He spent some time in the hospital before dying and when Emma learned of Tony's passing, she said, I don't believe it. And she showed very little remorse when viewing his body at the funeral home. So was that in, oh, I don't believe it, my potato soup worked for the fifth time? Or was it an, I don't believe it, he's dead? Uh, I don't think she was really remorseful about that. An autopsy was performed, though, on Tony, and surprise, surprise, poison was found. So this caused suspicion about how husband number six, Alois, died. So the body of husband number six, Alois, was exhumed, and it was found that he had been poisoned as well. Emma met both Alois and Tony by placing want ads in the newspaper under the title, Situation Wanted. She then would describe herself as a housekeeper for a motherless home, neat and clean. When she arrived for the job at Tony's house, she told him, I like the place, but what I really want is to get married. I don't want to be a housekeeper. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll work for two weeks. If you like me and want to get married, we'll do that. If you don't like me, I'll go back to St. Louis and you won't owe me a cent. Well, they married, and six weeks after the marriage, Tony passed away. So at Emma's trial, the evidence was piled up against her. The store clerk, <clears throat> that, uh, the store clerk said she bought flypaper, soaked in arsenic, and also poison was found at her home. One of Tony's sons, who visited on occasion, said that Emma never ate. She would often say that she wasn't hungry. So everyone else would be eating her food except for her. Tony mentioned to, <clears throat> to several people that Emma had poisoned him. He knew it was her food that was making him feel bad. Mrs. Simpson, who was one of the witnesses, said that Emma told her, quote, Hep has $1,000 and I'm going to get it, closed quote. <clears throat> so she clearly had some motive here, and the motive appeared to be money. Um, Alo uh, Alphonse Schneider, who was <clears throat> uh, Aloy's brother, said that he lived with Emma and Aloy's for a time. In his testimony, he said, she told me three times she wanted to kill me. One day in the midst of a quarrel, she said she wanted to cook me some soup. And then he leans in close to the jury and says, I'm sure glad I didn't eat any of that soup. So Emma was convicted of murder and was sentenced to life in prison. In May of 1968, she had her sentence commuted and she was released. She died in that same year in October. Emma's what we call a black widow serial killer, which is somebody who murders two or more husbands. While 
there was never any ev evidence to prove that she killed husbands one, two, and four, it's pretty safe to assume that she did it. I mean, it's just evidence is kind of stacked against her. Uh, it's too bad they couldn't catch her earlier on, though. She left a lot of pain in her wake because a lot of the guys that she married were widowers and they had children. So when she killed them off, she left a bunch of orphaned children behind. And these husbands were likely just looking for a good woman to share life with and to help take care of their kids and, you know, just share life's load with. But, uh, man, she just took advantage of them. She would present herself as this helper and someone who could meet those needs that these men had, and she just preyed on them. So just be careful the next time that you are served potato soup. While Emma Hepperman may be gone, she is certainly not forgotten. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.